So we're ta now talking to Professor Yu Zhen Chen from Department of Taiwan Culture, Languages and Literature at National Taiwan Normal University. Her research focuses on anthropology of food, modern food and meal history in Taiwan, as well as media and consumer society. So today we're talking to her about her paper, Migration Politics and the Changing Culinary Hierarchy, where she traces the evolution of Chinese regional food in Taiwan since the post-war period. So thank you for being with us today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm, I guess I'm going to start off with more general questions. Um, so what is the main research question you address in the paper and what is your answer to it? Hi, uh, hello everyone, I'm Yu Zhen Chen. And in this paper, I focus on the remapping of Chinese cuisine with the migration of the nationalist government to Taiwan after the Second World War. I think the status and the development of Chinese cuisine in Taiwan in the post-war period, especially in Taipei, is very unique. It's a very unique case because the nationalist government, together with millions of soldiers and civilians, not only moved Chinese regional cuisines in condensed geographic form to Taiwan, but also facilitated the integration and evolution of various regional cuisines, which further affected the world's understanding of Chinese cuisine. So in the context, we can see many Chinese regional cuisines made each other just in one city, Taipei, and the least Chinese regional cuisines override the local dishes, I mean Taiwanese cuisines. So my central question is how the definition and the characteristics of Chinese cuisine evolved in Taiwan and how it affected the development of Chinese cuisine in the world. Among the others, this article focuses on the changing hierarchy of Chinese regional cuisines. Okay, that's really great. So um, my next question uh, wants to know about the sort of interesting detail that you um, encountered uh, when doing the research. What was the most fascinating uh, fact that you discovered during the process? Yeah, I, I found that some uh, significant changes of Chinese cuisine could be found uh, in this research. First, the process I analyzed in this paper gave rise to the new Taiwanese Chinese cuisine and affected the definition and the development of Chinese cuisine by spreading it beyond Taiwan. So all Chinese regional cuisines had changed more or less in Taiwan. Therefore, we can find that the Sichuan cuisine or the Hunan cuisine are never the same in, in Taiwan with the dishes in contemporary China. And secondly, the culinary hierarchies of Chinese regional cuisines evolved in different historical periods. I want to mention some of my main findings here briefly. Uh, in the early post-war period, the regional cuisine on top of the hierarchy were Chenyang cuisine, Northern cuisine, and Jiangzhe cuisine. Uh, particularly, I want to mention the Jiangzhe cuisine. Actually, um, the term Jiangzhe cai Jiangzhe cuisine is interesting. Few people in Taiwan talk about Jiangsu cuisine or Zhejiang cuisine. Most of people just uh, mentioned Jiangzhe. It is a fusion of the two pro provinces. I think it's interesting. And uh, these cuisines all had close connections with the new political power and the rulers in Taiwan in the post-war period. So formed with the combination of two or more regional cuisines, uh, also, uh, it's the same in Chenyang cuisine and uh, in Northern cuisine. It uh, includes uh, Shandong Cai and uh, Beiping Cai and some other uh, regions in the north. These cuisines were mainly transplanted from the metropolitan of the mainland, particularly from Shanghai. The Chinese Civil War caused the largely migration of restaurants and upper class from Chinese mainland to Taiwan as well as the culinary map from Shanghai to Taipei. So until the 1970s, when the dining out business expanded, Sichuan cuisine became popular with the lower price and a strong taste. The development of tourism and the booming economy in the 1980s encouraged the rise of Hong Kong-style Cantonese cuisine standing on the top of the culinary hierarchy. So we can see that the hierarchy of uh, Chinese regional cuisines changed a lot in the 
the following decades. So, and uh, this change of culinary hierarchy was affected by a number of factors. Like the most important one is the political and economic factors. The high level cuisines were mostly the mainstream cu uh, cuisines of the administrative center and the officers. In addition, the symbolic and the cultural values of cuisines is also important. And uh, interesting, the number of the diners are not so important. For example, we have many Fujian uh, migration, migrants, but they have a fusion with the local Taiwanese dishes. So mm -hmm. nowadays, we it's, there are only very few Fujian <laughs> restaurants in Taiwan. Yeah. Okay, that's that's really fascinating because I, I think you do um, provide a, a succinct and convincing trajectory of how how things change, how the culinary hierarchy shifted in the 20th century Taiwan. And um, you mentioned that initially it was Fujian restaurant, and then it gave way to uh, Chinyang and then Beijing cuisine, and then and then the Sichuan and Hong Kong cuisine. So that's really fascinating to see how, how things change. Um, and you mentioned a couple of factors um, underlying this uh, shift. I wonder um, if you could um, elaborate a, a bit more on the local um, processes. So about the social processes, I think the 1970s and the 1980s are very important eras. And because in the two decades, we witnessed the, the development of tourism in Taiwan and almost all tourist hotels had Cantonese restaurants. So in um, uh, because Cantonese cuisine was characterized, uh, characterized with seafood and uh, they enjoy more high, higher price and they have a fresh or peculiar seafood such as shark fins and they uh, are very traditional, um, uh, you know, in a welcome, welcomed food in, in Chinese uh, cuisine and uh, they can be sold at higher prices. So Cantonese restaurants were viewed as an important way to increase the values and to raise prices of dishes by restaurants. Moreover, lower price uh, roast meat shops like Shao La Dian and tea restaurants Cha Tan Ting, they were also introduced to Taiwan. It is also because there are more Hong Kong chefs and migrants moved to, to Taiwan uh, under the uh, political situations. And it is still common nowadays to find a roast meat shop on the corner where the chefs and the shopkeepers spoke Hong, uh, Hong Kong Cantonese. So, and uh, the second wave of influence from Hong, uh, Cantonese uh, restaurants came before, uh, before the handover of Hong Kong at uh, uh, 1997. So um, between the two waves of immigration from Hong Kong, Taiwan has experienced rapid economic growth and the stock market soared, especially in the 1980s. More people were willing uh, to spend money on expensive dishes such as shark fin soup and abalone. As a result, Hong Kong style Cantonese restaurants with shark fins and seafood was the most popular dining choices among the upper class and entrepreneurs in Taiwan during the 1980s and early 1990s. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you for contextualizing on, on this bit because when I was reading it, I just wanted to know more about what the context was like and that, that's really, really helpful. And another question, um, another detail I picked up is about the Beiping restaurants. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, if you think about the Beiping restaurant or, or Beijing cuisine, it's it's it doesn't pass, it wouldn't pass among the, the men and Chinese because you know, the, the city is a collection of uh, regional cuisines, but it doesn't have its own own, own tradition. It, it has some some of its own kind of fusion tradition, but it doesn't pass as a cuisine level. It's more like a xiao chun, a little snacks and um, sort of um, weird stuff. And um, uh, but in the context of Taiwan, it seems that and you do mention that there is a lot of uh, um, embrace from the literati who are very nostalgic of their time back in Beijing. So I wonder if to what extent is the rise of Beijing cuisine or restaurants um, a result of the textual production among literati? Yeah, uh, uh, actually about the development of uh, Beijing 
cuisine. I think it's not the whole story in my paper because it. Mm. Um, I I want to mention that uh, actually there were more soldiers from Shandong in Taiwan in the post-war period, and it seems mm. that we can always find a bun shop in the corner selling mantou, baozi, dou sha bao, hua juan, <laughs> and at least uh. Snakes or this um, food are very well uh, delicious and uh, they, they are welcomed in Taiwan. So actually, I think not only uh, we can find many Beijing restaurants they sell uh, like roast dogs and many royal dishes, and uh, we can also find some very common snakes like mantle shops. And uh, but it is significant that we can find many. Uh, uh, food writers they 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 wrote about that. Uh, food memories about Beijing, and uh, that's because many, uh, because we can uh, see the uh, changes in languages. Because in the post-war period in Taiwan, people are uh, were forced to speak Mandarin, and uh, mm. those uh, literates from Beijing they enjoy and they have the cultural capitals, so they write a lot of. Uh, articles and uh, including literature and uh, they are they become very popular. So they also they uh, wrote about about their food memories uh, of their hometown Beijing. Yeah, because more or less they have uh, some kind of Beijing experience. They study there or they uh born, they were born there or they work there. So yeah, it's a significant that we we can find many uh food literature on Beijing uh, food. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's also wonderful to know. Um, um, from from the answers you just mentioned to both of the the detailed questions, it seems that there, um, for for whatever the regional cuisine tradition in in Taiwan, there is also always um, you know, the high version and the lower version. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Mm, that's 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 something really interesting, and and that's um, yeah, that's uh, that's something to think about. Um, as a sort of extension from from your your paper, which opens up a lot of uh, it provides so many interesting um, details, which will further open up more more um, questions um, for other research, I guess. So um, I'm going to um, ask you a final question, going back to um, the the bigger, uh, more general theme. Uh, which, uh, how how does your paper resonate with uh, other research in the field? Yeah, I think this paper could be a good case to re-explore the notion of Chinese regional cuisine, especially the idea of four or eight main regional cuisines, the so-called mm -hmm. Si Da Cai Xi, Ba Da Cai Xi. Yeah, in some other uh, recent scholarships, this question was also raised and studied, like in a special issue of the journal Global Food History, and also mm -hmm. uh, Michelle King also wrote a paper about that, and I agree with her that and some other researchers, also some uh, scholars in Taiwan, they suggest that although Tai Xi, the, um, tai xi, uh, the idea of Tai Xi is not new, uh, uh, but the ideas of four men or eight men uh, regional cuisines were shaped in the second half of the 20th century, like in many books on Chinese cuisine written in the 1880, uh, 1980s, like uh, the book of uh, uh, earlier uh, in 19. 77, I mean the book of Zhang Guangzhi, yeah. The number of men uh, regional cuisines actually were not consistent. Some said four, some said five, and some said other numbers. Uh, so we can further consider why and how this idea of uh, four or eight men regional cuisines was shaped who and why we need such an idea of men regional cuisines. Mm. And my, my paper takes the case in Taiwan as an example to show that the idea of regional cuisines is hierarchical and it is, was influ influenced by political, economic, and uh, cultural factors. It was not just formed by the natural environment. And actually, mm. these cuisines were kind of fusion. This could also contribute to the discussion about authenticity of Chinese cuisine or uh, food traditions. I think this paper uh, tries to raise some uh, uh, important questions like that, and uh, maybe we can think more about it. <laughs> Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, that's great. That, 
that's so so great um i think that's all the questions i have you for today and it was really really wonderful having the conversation with you and i learned even more uh about the topic about your paper through the conversation so thank you very much